Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I urge the, be the feet of the previous question so that we can amend, as the gentleman just explained, the rule to immediately consider my resolution condemning Senator Sanders' blatantly false comment. Regarding the Castro regime in Cuba, the racist, terrorist, murderous Castro regime in Cuba. I've said this before. If anybody wants to know the devastation of socialism and the tyranny that so often accompanies it, I invite you to speak to some of my constituents, including thousands, thousands of former political prisoners now in exile. Let me just mention some of those. Jorge Luis Garcia Perez Antunes. Angel de Fana, Roberto Martin Perez. There are so many others who are in South Florida who have suffered in the prisons of Cuba just because they have asked for and fought for freedom. But there are also former political prisoners who are still on the island, and I can mention many of them. Let me just mention Dr. Oscar Elias Bisset, who just recently was arrested, harassed, and then it looks like potentially released and the relatives of current political prisoners, such as Jose Daniel Ferrer, Mitzael Diaz Paseiro, Miguel Diaz Bausa, Janet Perez Quevedo. You can't speak to them because they're in prison currently, but you can speak to their relatives. All of them have witnessed the firsthand, firsthand the destruction that socialism causes. All of these political prisoners have to be released at once. That's what should, we should be demanding. Now, unfortunately, this is not new coming from the progressive movement. But I remind Senator Sanders and the progressive movement that the Castro regime is not only a threat, a threat to the national security interests of the United States, but also to the democracies, the democracies in our hemisphere. I want to remind Senator Sanders of Cuba's close relationship, of the Cuban regime's close relationship with some of the world's worst thugs, such as Iran. Iran and the Cuban regime held the first Iran-Cuban business forum in Tehran in August of 2019 and have signed memorandum of understandings affirming their commitment to expand trade and coordination. There were just recently two high-profile visits of Iranian so-called foreign minister and also the so-called president of Iran in Cuba in 2016. You see, for years, the Cuban regime has been on the list of state sponsor of terrorism for its support of other terrorist states, terrorist organizations, and violence around the world and in this hemisphere. In 2013, the Cuban regime, I remind folks, was caught, caught smuggling weapons to North Korea in the largest violation of international sanctions against that rogue regime. It has been propping up the Maduro, the Maduro regime with thousands of intelligence operatives to oppose the Venezuelan people, in some cases to kill the Venezuelan people. The Cuban regime has been harboring fugitives from U.S. justice, including FBI's most wanted terrorist, Joanne Chesimard, and terrorist bomb maker William Morales. That's just to name a few. So that is why, Madam Speaker, I filed a resolution that condemns the blatantly false comments of Democratic Socialist candidate for President Senator Bar Bernie Sanders. This resolution also rejects the false claims that Cuba's health care, education, and literacy rate have improved as a result of the Castro regime, the Castro dictatorship. So those claims have been debunked by so many sources. Let me just throw a couple of facts. According to the State Department report, a State Department report, Cuba's infant mortality rate was 32 of 1,000 live births, one of the best in the Western Hemisphere. But Madam Speaker, this was not Castro. This is in the 1950s, pre-Castro. Cuba's life expectancy was also one of the highest in Latin America in the 1950s, pre-Castro. No, it wasn't Castro. This was pre-Castro. Cuba's literacy rate was one of the highest in the Western Hemisphere, pre-Castro, in the 1950s. Those are the facts, Madam Speaker. The realities of Cuba, and Cuba 
now well over a million people in a country of just 11 million have risked everything to try, try to find freedom, to try to get away from that socialist tyranny. Many have perished on, Mexico, on rafts as they place themselves, their children at risk in shark-infested waters for just a chance at freedom. Gentlemen's Another time's minute. expired. Gentlemen's recognized. Madam Speaker, why would they do this if things in Cuba are just not all that bad? Again, in contrast, during the pre-Castro Cuba, more Americans were traveling to Cuba and going to Cuba than Cubans coming to the United States. Today, now, Madam Speaker, here we have an opportunity to condemn Senator Bernie, uh, Bernie, Senator Bernie Sanders' blatantly false and hurtful comments regarding the racist, terrorist Castro regime. Join me in standing in solidarity with the Cuban people. But by the way, by extension, also solidarity with the Venezuelan people who are working to regain their freedom against what the OAS Secretary General has called the Cuban, a Cuban army of occupation in Venezuela. So join me in standing in solidarity with the people and not with the regime that oppresses them. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield back.